Hey, my name is Dr. Harry Murray. I'm a DFO scientist here at Northwest Atlantic Fishery Center in St. John's. We're working on a project to compare the condition and health of mussels grown in shallow water versus grown in deep water sites. ACRDP, Aquaculture Collaborative Research and Development Program. That's a funding program administered directly by Department of Fisheries and Oceans, Canada, and it provides funding money for DFO researchers to work directly with industry. The grower, North Atlantic Processors, whose president is Mr. Terry Mills, Terry uh, came to me with a, with a question about um, wh whether or not we could start looking at, at the, the idea of growing mussels in, in the offshore. He's been playing around with the idea for quite a number of years. My name is Terry Mills. I'm with Nor Atlantic Processors Limited. I'm the plant manager and farm supervisor, and I'm also part owner. We started about seven years ago in this part of the bay, and uh, we needed extra grow-out sites, and the only place left on the northeast coast was out in the deeper, say, the main ocean. We started doing some research on our own, uh, some just commercial trials, and results were encouraging. We were growing mussels down fairly deep water. So we did it a few years. We looked at the results, and then we, uh, obviously we were certainly out of our league when it comes to, uh, we had to get some applied science to uh, confer what we were analyzing. And, and so we uh, met with some DFO people and met with Harry, got a project together, submitted it, uh, off to the races. We're out here in uh, Notre Dame Bay in an area called Pleasant View where we're looking at working on our ACRDP project uh, to, to study the, uh, the growth of and the health of mussels in deep water versus mussels in shallow water, which is more typical. Deep water culture is not a new thing. It's, it's actually uh, ha happening in a number of areas around the world, but it is quite new here in Newfoundland. And the idea of going offshore is, is to increase the overall uh, sustainability of the industry. As part of this project, we've been also collecting environmental data. The environmental data is important because the animals grow in the water environment, obviously, and anything that, that happens in that water environment is gonna affect mussels directly. This instrument here is called a, an echo song, and it's an oceanographic instrument that allows us to measure various environmental parameters like oxygen, temperature, salinity, and chlorophyll. We're going to be using it today to do a, an environmental or an oceanographic profile of the water column. There is some thought that there are areas in deep water that are basically concentrated food for the mussels. And if you can find a zone in deep water and put your mussels there, then the mussels should do very, very, very well. If you can find that zone, then, uh, then the mussels will be in the optimum position for growth and for health and low, very low stress. The other thought is that in deep water, the environment is a lot more stable. So the animals like a more stable environment. The more stable the environment is, the better they'll be as well. We're learning a tremendous amount. And uh, over this period of time, we were able also to bring in a really fantastic graduate student over there, Gary Gallardeg. She's a PhD student working on the project. And she's introduced a lot of really new, really innovative ideas to the whole project. Small. What we are looking into is uh, the uh, physiological stress response of the muscles. So uh, we are looking into some uh, gene of interest that are related to, uh, in particular, to environmental um, characteristics like temperature or salinity, for example. This is the part of the work where we look at the, uh, at the changes in, in certain types of enzymes related to the environmental response of the muscles. We know from previous work that's been done that uh, there are certain proteins and their associated genes that can respond to stress factors, changes in, in salinity, to temperature, and such. So we're looking at a group of specific genes related to these, this type of, of system. So what we need to do is we need to sample from the gill tissue. We're going to freeze this and bring it back to the laboratory where we can run specific molecular biology tests on this type of tissue to let us know how the, the, these genes are responding over time. The results have indicated that mussels grown in, in deep water seem to do a little better than those grown in shallow water. The project was certainly worthwhile from a science point of view and also from a commercial application to uh, mussel farming in deep water.
This work is very important to the industry itself as the, as the muscle culture industry is expanding, the, the numbers of these shallow water sites are decreasing and uh, which becomes a big problem as the, as the industry expands. So it's a good idea to start exploring moving offshore into more deeper areas so that we can maintain or improve on the sustainability of the industry over time. There's still many questions to be answered. We got a lot of questions answered. Uh, and I think that uh, this process and this project will certainly be uh, advanced to other parts and other regions of Canada and probably anywhere in the world. This is a mussel sock taken from our, our south arm deep site. So the mussels were hanging from 15 meters below the surface for 12 months, and this is what you get. Fantastic mussels.